with basketball back, with the season back, the fear for, for a lot of people is, is that basketball might in some ways take the, the spotlight and the attention off of some of these uh, bigger social justice issues that you guys are, are working so hard to address. As an NBA community, that being players, coaches, execs, owners, um, the league, as well as us in the media, what do you think we all can do to make sure that that doesn't happen? It's going to continue. Um, the message is going to continue to be sent um, throughout. You know, I think the regular season and the playoffs, and uh, and and beyond that. So, you know, I don't I don't worry too much about uh, diluting the message because it's really strong and it goes beyond the sports. Uh, so, I'm sure that we're going to do a great job of uh, continue to uh, enforce it. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Going to go next to Greg Ross from CBC. Hey, Mark, uh, I, I wanted to talk about, you've had a couple of games now um, in the bubble, a couple of exhibition games. Um, it, when you think about how things were last year with that playoff run and, and just the, the excitement with the fans and the crowd, how do you think, um, how do you think you're going to be able to generate that kind of excitement in a bubble like that? It, I mean, is it possible? You just said playoffs and, and playoffs obviously go with the excitement. And that's what you work on all year for um so obviously you don't have the the fans um you know to kind of cheer you up but i think um uh, you don't need any extra energy for the playoffs i mean uh, that's playoffs it's, it's pretty simple but is it, it can you talk about the differences between um what it's like in the bubble i mean do you, do you notice it when you're on the floor at all is, is it a big difference uh, as far as what in terms of that atmosphere in the building um, I know they try to create some atmosphere in there, but I, I, I mean, I'm wondering if you guys are so focused on the floor that you don't even notice it. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's a different scenario, and, uh, but it's a great scenario. It's, it's pretty, uh, when it comes to basketball, it's pretty pure. Uh, you can hear everything. Um, you know, you can uh, communicate easily with all your teammates. And, uh, and, and so, you know, when it comes to that, it has its, it's good things too. When, during timeout, you can hear everything really clear. Um, you know, it has it has a good good stuff too that I think uh, we all can take from. Uh, obviously, it's not the same. It's not uh, the same situation. You don't have you know twenty thousand people inside the building cheering for you and and uh, and pushing you every possession. Um, uh, but you know we have a lot of guys in our corner. Um, in our bench to, to create that, that energy and that positive uh, attitude uh, and support our teammates. Thanks, Mark. Next, we go to Eric Kareen from The Athletic. Hey, Mark. Thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you know most champions, not all, have sort of a top five player in the league to help carry them in those dramatic situations. There have been exceptions, the Pistons, the Spurs in 2014, that kind of thing. What, what makes your team able to be one of those exceptions, in your opinion? Say that one more time. I, I couldn't hear you. Uh, the whole question? The, the first part, the top five thing, I didn't get it. Okay, yeah. Like most, most championship teams have like a top five player over the course of, you know, over the course of the season. This team isn't built that way. Uh, there have been exceptions to that, sort of like the Pistons in 2004, et cetera. What makes your team capable of being one of those exceptions, a team that can get to that level without necessarily that player? I look at it differently. I look at uh, how, you know, all the teams that had a top five player supposedly ending yeah. at a championship, uh, right? Uh, so yeah. what's, what's more important to you? And uh, yeah, you got to just find a way uh, to be the best team possible because at the end of the day, like, it doesn't matter how – you know, good of a player you have uh, on your side, at the end of the day, you're going to win it as a team, and it takes a whole team um, to win a, a, not only a championship, but a, any playoff series. So let's focus on that, that that's what we can control and, uh, and be the best team that we can be, um, you know, uh, and continue to grow without, you know, without every, every regular season game, every playoff game, continue to get a little bit better and a little bit better. And let's see what we end that up. Uh, you know, everybody has a lot of players and, and stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, to me, I always feel that the best team wins, regarding, regardless of uh, who they have on the roster. On that note, are there like one, in, one or two factors that when you think about your team, 
you say, if we can do this really well, we're going to put ourselves in a good situation. Like, what are you most curious about, kind of? Um, shit, I mean, if you, if you play the best defense and you make the most shots, you win. <laughs> Uh, to me, that <laughs> if that's the two things that you can ask for, I, I'll, those those will be my two my two things, right? Whoever makes the most shots and plays the best defense is gonna win. Uh, I guess it's pretty simple. Thanks, Mark. All right. <laughs> Got time for two more. Gonna go to Michael Grange from Sportsnet first. Hey, Mark. Um, you are uh, the same age as LeBron James. You've been playing professional basketball about the same amount of time, I believe. What does it take, or when you look at, what does it take to, to still be at the, your peak level, both in terms of your motivation and everything, this far into your career? And, and, uh, and the, way he his team, the way he leads his team, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. And it's um, inspiring, I think, to everybody. And, uh, and he's always done that. Um, at every level, so you know, he's it's it's not many like him, uh, you know, and, uh, and and I think we all the players in the league got to make the most out of their opportunity and and their role and whatever they have, and that's that's the only thing you can control. You cannot all be uh, you know that at that level at that age, um, you know. So you have to be the best you can be at whatever stage you you are. So uh, regardless if you're 18 or 19 or 20. And, uh, and you get five minutes every three games, um, you're still going to be the best player um, that you can be with those five minutes and uh, continue to grow uh, your role. So obviously he's a, um, a great role model for a lot of reasons. Um, but I think you, what you take, uh, what you try to take is, you know, the, the, the amount of work that he puts in and how serious he takes it. Uh, and that's, you know, how unselfish he can be on the court. The, um, are you, what advantages to being, you know, in your mid thirties and still playing in the NBA are there? I mean, it's a young man's game, but why can people like yourself and a couple of other guys seem to be just as good now as they were when they were 25 or 22? Um, what advantages, you know, it's, it's, you, you put, you put things in, in perspective differently. Um, the game does not affect you the same way that affects you maybe when you were 23 or 24, where everything was so so much more emotional. Um, but it's still a lot of fun. It's still a lot of fun to go out there and 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 compete and make your teammates better and do all the things that you need to do. Obviously, uh, you know the situation that we're in. Um, it's a little tougher when you when you have a family and uh, your family's far away and you know and, and they not in the protection of of a. Of a great place like the bubble that we are in you have to you know worry about them constantly and see them through through your phone um, for now over a month um, so that's that's the downside to being 35 and having a, a family um, with you which is not only the players case I mean there's a lot of staff here that work around the team the you know they have the same situation and uh, so you know I can relate to all the parents that are here that cannot be with their you know, with the young ones, uh, and, and it's 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 a challenge. Obviously, the players, uh, you know, we get more of a platform that, to talk about it. But uh, you know, other than the players, there's I think um, over a thousand people here that are you know more in that on that situation. Mark, I appreciate that, and thank you for saying that. That's important. That's a good message. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And final question is going to go to Stephen Long for Sportsnet. Hey, Mark. Thanks for doing this. Uh, Pascal was just uh, was just talking about how he had to educate himself when he first came to North America about um, kind of like racial matters and, and anti-black racism in North America. I was just curious when you first came came across here, uh, did you have to do the same for yourself to to kind of, to kind of learn some kind of the differences between here and maybe Europe? You know, you know where I, I landed in Memphis, um, you know, and, uh, and one of the first things that we did as a team. Um, is go to, to the Lorraine Motel, um, right downtown Memphis. Uh, and if you have a chance, uh, I will advise you to go. Uh, it has grown and improved a lot over the years, um, but the history is uh, still there. The education is still there to be, to be taught. And you have a lot of leaders in, uh, in the Memphis community area that can uh, really help you. And, and, and yes, yes, uh, you have to learn a lot and, uh, and see how, how much of a struggle and how how 
um, African uh, African American people lack of opportunity throughout the history and uh, and how hard they had to work to get that opportunity and be where they at now and it's still not where they're supposed to be. So you know it's a work in progress, uh, but I think without with all the allies and all the people pushing for it, I think eventually, um, you know, we're gonna get for sure to, to, to where we wanna be.